Okay, I want to play a uh, Hillary clip and a Bernie clip, both from 1994. Uh, both, no? She's in 96, okay. And uh, both having to do with the crime bill that was, was this the 96 crime bill? There was a 94? This was, okay, so this was, her, her clip is from 96, explaining what happened two years earlier with the 94 crime bill. And the second clip is Bernie, uh, what, four days before the bill was voted on or thereabouts? The week, it was the week of, of the vote or, or very shortly before the vote uh, saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, we need to make some changes here in this crime bill. Um, so let's start out with Hillary Clinton, a younger Hillary Clinton. Uh, this is 1996 to have an organized effort against gangs just as in a previous generation we had an organized effort against the mob we need to take these people on they are often connected to big drug cartels they are not just gangs of kids anymore they are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators no conscience no empathy we can talk about why they ended up that way but first we have to bring them to heal and the president has asked the FBI to launch a very concerted effort against gangs everywhere in addition to that, he has appointed a new drug czar. You probably saw him Tuesday night. He's one of the most distinguished uh, active military generals that we have in our country. He's already proven that he knows how to interdict drugs because of his command of the uh, South American uh, activity on behalf of the United States. But General McCaffrey will make a big difference. And I believe it is now time for all of us to know what we can do individually to be part of this anti-crime, anti-gangs, anti-drug effort. So we are in full war method and mode, and we are bringing General McCaffrey in to lead the charge. That was Hillary Clinton's position two years after the crime bill was signed, you know, defending it. Here's Bernie. Uh, in the weeks before the crime bill, when they were debating the crime bill. Here's Bernie on the floor of the House. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, let me begin with a profound remark. Two plus two equals four. In other words, there is a logical and rational process called cause and effect. In terms of Newtonian physics, that means that every action causes an equal and opposite reaction. In other words, fellow members of the House, there are reasons why things happen, as controversial as that statement may be. A farmer neglects to tend and care for his fields, it is likely that that crop will fail. A company neglects to invest in research and development, it is likely that that company will not be profitable. In a similar way, a society which neglects, which oppresses, and which disdains a very significant part of its population, which leaves them hungry, impoverished, unemployed, uneducated, and utterly without hope, will, through cause and effect, create a population which is bitter, which is angry, which is violent, and a society which is crime-ridden. And that is the case in America, and it is the case in other countries throughout the world. Mr. Chairman, how do we talk about the very serious crime problem in America without mentioning, without mentioning that we have the highest rate of childhood poverty in the industrialized world by far, with 22% of our children in poverty and 5 million kids hungry today? Do you think maybe that might have some relationship to crime. How do we talk about crime when this Congress is prepared this year to spend 11 times more for the military than for education? When 21 percent of our kids drop out of high school, when a recent study told us that twice as many young workers now earn poverty wages as 10 years ago, when the gap between the rich and the poor is growing wider, and when the rate of poverty continues to grow. Do you think maybe that might have some relationship to crime? Mr. Chairman, it is my firm belief that clearly there are people in our society who are horribly violent, who are deeply sick and sociopathic, and clearly these people must be put behind bars in order to protect society from them. But it is also my view that through the neglect of our government and through a grossly irrational set of priorities, we are dooming today 
tens of millions of young people to a future of bitterness, misery, hopelessness, drugs, crime, and violence. And, Mr. Speaker, all the jails in the world, and we already imprison more people per capita than any other country, and all of the executions. Can I ask for one more moment, please? I uh, give the gentleman 30 seconds. We run. All the jails in the world and all the executions in the world will not make that situation right. We can either educate or electrocute. We can create meaningful jobs, rebuilding our society, or we can build more jails. Mr. Speaker, let us create a society of hope and compassion, not one of hate and vengeance. Thank you. I'll just uh, let those two quotes stand uh, on their own. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.